Yeah, but they're already good. I heard they're crying. I know, I know, I know. And the fate of the nation comes down to little pieces of paper like this. Scribbled numbers that you get from somebody who's not supposed to share their exit poll with you. These numbers have held for about four, four hours now. Um, and they are, carries the top number. Ohio, 5148. Pennsylvania, 5643. Florida, 5148. They have a word for that. And they usually write it in big black print on the front of newspapers, and they call it a fucking landslide. I was on the convention floor. I was as close as you can, you can get without being, um, um, I mean, literally um, next to the man. I was watching him. I was, was riveted. And then I saw this, this salute begin. Thank you. I'm, I'm John Kerry. And I'm... I literally held my breath and couldn't believe it. And by the time the salute was finished, reporting for duty. I mean, for, for me at that moment, everything changed. For America, the hope is there, the sun is rising. Our best days are still to come. Thank you. Good night. Even it makes me more, more nervous. If we win, we'll be running the world. Say hi to the back of the uh, <laughs> yes, band today. Yes. This is my office, so to speak, right back here. The only six foot eight guy in the campaign <laughs> resides in the back. Are you of the six band. eight or six four? Six eight. Okay. Senator so. six four. And if you look at us, there's a little. Uh... So Marvin. Yes. I think I'm going to introduce you to speak today. I've been waiting for this moment for a very long time. I have a lot to say. He spends all day talking with press people and policy people, and you know, I'm sort of the one person I think that he can just, you know, let his guard down and just, just hang out. Are you ready to this speech? I'm ready. I, I know the stumps. So what would you say if I? <laughs> I know the stump. You don't want me talking about that. You don't want my stuff. You yeah. use mine. Marvin, you be the voice of God. You want to be the voice of God? Please welcome the next president of the United States. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, come on, man. Ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the next president of the United States, John Kerry. Let me be as blunt and direct with the American people as I can be. Let me tell you the truth, which is what America deserves. Well, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, <clears throat> I guess we're in the final countdown to the debate, and we wanted to get together with uh, all of you on the call and <clears throat> go into whirling dervish spin uh, before we all head off to Miami. I'm a big believer that if the president ever asks you to do something, or if the candidate for president asks you to do something, you're supposed to always say yes. The goal was to sort of reach the election day as the finish line and collapse. This is how David Morehouse ruined my life. I was out of this silliness. I had left the circus at the White House. I had a grown-up job, and Morehouse just kept calling, driving it. And the final way he convinced me to do it is he said, Jimmy, remember all those morons who ran all those campaigns we've been on in the past? He said, now we can be those morons. CNN has a Gallup poll out that they won't release until 6 o'clock that shows 47 W49 uh, carry among uh, registered. It shows what we've always thought the race to be, which is dead heat. Three years ago, 
President Bush enacted a far-reaching ban on federal funding for stem cell research. Senator, they say that you're lying on this subject, that the president's the first to provide funding. Senator, one question on the subject. Senator, there's no ban and he's the first to provide funding. The senator has asked some of us up here to answer some of the questions. Professor Lebowski is going to answer the question. The gentleman's asking the difference between what the president has said and I'm just the trying to get position. the presidential candidate's response. He, he just asked the professor to answer the question for you. Um, the presidential ban is so lame. So bizarre. As much as they don't want to talk to us outside their terms right now, which means, you know, very few press conferences and very little informal chit-chat um, were necessary for them. They're sometimes setting the terms about what we talk about, but we're the means by which that message gets disseminated throughout the country. And, you know, it was interesting that we really didn't see anybody doing their job. You know, most of these people, you know, their fundamental, their fundamental relationship is with the media. Um, and mostly, therefore, the job has got to be to take care of media people. Do you think I could do an NBC interview with my voice like this? Yes. Do you think it's like a water? I know. <coughs> <laughs> over. That's a quote. That's a quote of the week. Kicking ass, taking names. Uh, Stephanie Cutter is, is inexplicable. Um, she is mean-spirited, inattentive, not too bright. There was a couple times where I said, Steph, you know, these guys are, 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 are having negative personal reactions to your personality. You need to hear that, I and mean, they're having that reaction, and you shouldn't kid yourself about it. You know, as, as, a, as, a, as a reporter, it's just you come away from that experience with a, with a decidedly bad taste in your mouth. And we're not going to see us divide in red states and blue states. We're going to unite America as one America, red, white, and blue. What you do when you haven't run before is you think the guys who are managing are smarter than you in terms of the, not the substance, but in terms of, well, this is the way, you know, the press will respond. Who gives a goddamn how you respond? I really mean it. I don't give a goddamn how you respond. Forgive me for asking this, because I know you're, you're trying to stay on message things. Like, I know you don't care what the reaction of, of, of the ink stained wretches is generally, but watching this campaign, as we all have for so long, it seems like every 10 minutes there's a shift in sort of what the strategy is again. Who gives a shit? Whether you think or anybody thinks you're going to stick to a message. What is important is what's coming out of his mouth. The story is what's coming out of his mouth. Not whether Joe Lockhart got trumped by me or anybody else to change the message. That ain't the story. That's your story. But that ain't the story anybody around here cares about. Anyway, see so you guys. I gotta go. Yeah. All right. Newsweek? I didn't want to be, and it wasn't my job to be a spokesperson for the campaign. I didn't see my function on this campaign as, as media manipulator. It's a sad day in the campaign when the staff is attacking the press. Not a spy among them. I was a campaign person, and they understood that. Holy shit, look, there's work to do. Are we ready to go? Daddy. Hey, folks, we need a load. Oh, oh, no. <laughs> This is the boat. This is freedom. Okay. The name of the boat is Columbine. Is it really? It is. It's named that in 1994, well before the massacre. It's beautiful. You have nightmare days on the campaign and you just right. pull this out and flip through these things. Like I said, some people have children. Beautiful boat. Yeah, it's a beautiful boat. Really great. And that's where I'm going to go. Me and the boat. There are two things that happened in the past week, not just the debate, but also a lot of very bad news coming out of Iraq. Kidnappings, bombings, those are also helping Senator Kerry. It's not just the debate that's making this a horse race. Gonna get him and give the raspberries. <laughs> Who's gonna do that? Daddy's gonna do it. Daddy! Yes. Daddy! Daddy's here. Daddy. Why do you keep running around yelling, Daddy? Here I am. Dada. Dada. 
I know, that's no good, huh? He's become afraid of my suitcase. Yep, that's Daddy, Daddy up on the wall. Who's that? Daddy. It's Daddy. Who's that? Daddy. There was a time when he was calling all pictures Daddy. <laughs> that's when I knew it was time to come home. <laughs> They've been coming at us on a couple of different things. I think they're reeling a little bit and they're just reaching, so uh, we have to figure out what we want to do, whether we want to respond, and how that response will be. We may hit back tomorrow. Yeah, so what, what do we got tomorrow? No, I know. I know. Uh, but what, what, what tack would you take? Right. I, I mean, I think Bush should, should pay a price. Every single time. So, so no, matter who, no matter who mentions it, where, he should pay some kind of price. This is the boat right here. I love this boat and I miss it desperately. I did 88, I worked for uh, Gary Hart in 1987. And then Dukakis, and then uh, on the Clinton campaign in 92, 96, 2000, and now 2004. It's about four campaigns too many. So you know how Bush left Houston National Guard? Listen, these guys have had it both ways in this Vietnam shit, but now we're gonna be like, Fair is fair, fuckface. Where the hell were you? What's you know? What's with the what's with the running? You know, just can you name one one of your pals that was in the Air National Guard in Alabama? Somebody you hung out with? Yeah, somebody Come on. saw you there. Yeah, you were a sociable guy. Commander that saw you there. Come on, just one guy. Somebody Give us one guy, Mr. People. President. Somebody no, we're not going to ask you any other questions, Mr. President. That's what we want to know. <laughs> and we're reporters, so we get to ask these questions. We're trying to figure out how they're going to try to get even because they were really pissed about what we did the last two debates. So, so the only way we can think that they would try to get even is to have someone off stage that when the debate's over, that instead of just bringing out the spouses, they would bring someone out on camera. Maybe they'd bring Bush Sr., Colin Powell. They pushed for Colin Powell last uh, Okay. All right, I'm going to get on this operations call. Stephen Morehouse, there's an asked-in for Tony Wilson, the state political director, to ride in the motorcade from the debate to the rally. Uh, unfortunately, he's going to want to unwind with THK. Why is he going to be with THK? Because he just finished a major debate, and he's going to need a couple minutes before he goes to a rally to unwind. It's not a big deal. This way. If we couldn't trust John Kerry then, how could we possibly trust him now? Ah, oh, it's sick. This guy went over there and fought for his country and war hero saved a man's life and they put that crap on television, it's ridiculous. How could you accuse us of being war criminals and promote the enemy's position back home? It was an internet ad, then $200,000 ad by the first Swift case, whatever it was, mid-August. Fox immediately ran with it as though it were a news story, which is predictable and understandable. That's what they do. CNN, you know, good government grounds, sort of sat on their hands for three days, you know. But the difference this time was Fox is kicking CNN's ass in ratings. So CNN finally said, give me Swift Boat. The fact that those two are in competition and they drive it into the cycle is instructive, you know. But we fucking missed it. Everybody missed it. I think people in our headquarters are applying the old lesson, which is, you're the dumbest person in the room if you're advocating keeping this thing up in the air. So the first day, that's your, your reaction. That's the right reaction. Uh, the second day it plays, you know, now the, the, the question is, do you respond now and turn it into a three-day story, or do you let it go? Why do so many of us have serious questions? John Kerry cannot be trusted. So Fox had it for three days by themselves. That started to percolate. CNN kicked it up. The networks kicked it up. And they kept taking gaps. To me, that's the most interesting dynamic that's happened on this campaign. And it killed us. I'd rather have a, a nightmare August than a nightmare October. Fuckers. It wasn't necessarily a substance of not responding. It was not responding to being attacked. It was, it was a deeper uh, effect of... Uh, Someone's smacking John Kerry. He's not hitting back. He must be weak. I mean, the problem was that Swift Boat was largely true. Um, you know, for all of the, for all of its 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 um, its factual inaccuracy, its sentiment was true, which is that that um, 
you know, this guy was, um, w w you know, he was an anti-war guy. Um, that's it. Um, that's what he was doing. The first debate on international affairs was supposed to be President Bush's strength, and he didn't quite cut it in that debate. And now he's got to really struggle to catch up in the remaining two debates, which are going to be focused on domestic issues. Got eighty four dollars from a timber company that he owns and he's counted as a small business. I own a timber company? <laughs> That's news to me. You need some wood? Most small businesses are shut down for exports. What just He said did I own a timber company? You need some wood? It's weird. A timber company? Huh? What the fuck was he talking about? Yeah. Bush on the timber company? I don't think so. I hope you don't think that. I mean, I. Did you hear that? Because I think whoever's president must guard your liberties, must not erode your rights. Okay, you guys are on that because they're going to be all over it. That concludes tonight's debate. That's good. Enough. ABC has us. We won 44-41. closer than the last one, but we won. Mr. Morehouse. Marvin, I want you to go out there, stand behind the senator, and stick your tongue out. I'll give you $50. <laughs> That'd be great. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure uh, it'd be very useful, helpful to the campaign. Well, it wouldn't hurt the campaign. Now, maybe I could go out and like, pull my pants down. Now, that would be something. Maybe. I'd give you more than 50 for that. Great job, man. Well done. Well done. Yep. Sherry yeah. strategists say they will be positioned to win on November 2nd. Instead of standing up for you, George Bush has chosen secret meetings. Bush, Cheney, and Blash carry on reducing terror to a nuisance. Sort of like gambling and prostitution. This is, Cheney is such a... This is all part of a pre-9-11 mindset and danger. Oh, they are scrounging. They lied. Wow. They lied. They lied. They lied. They lied. So all they can do is pick random, out of context quotes. It is amazing. Colorado. Colorado. That'd be huge. How do you lie? to the American people like that and get away with what these guys have. Well, you don't think anybody's going to do anything about it. Amazing. I don't like that picture. Oh, I hate that picture. And most undecided voters tend to break for the challenge. It's been three weeks. I, I, I'm seriously, uh, I'm starting to lose it a little bit. I can't sleep. Really? You having a problem with it? No, I've been sleeping pretty good, actually. Yeah, well, the three hours I get every night is... Can I show you something new stick? By any objective standard. What the fuck is that? This is the fucking New York Times fucking magazine. Look at the fucking picture. Look at the inside. They're, they're not trying to fuck us? Are you surprised, Jim? It might be, I know it sounds paranoid, but for Christ's sakes, they had fucking 75,000 fucking frames. Look at that. He's fucking fixing his tie. You know much Here, he's like, the, the asshole said, Hey, Senator, you know, he shot a bunch. It's like a fucking confidence game. They shoot a bunch of jacket, he comes out, you know, we're doing a photo shoot. We want to put you on the cover, it'll be great. He comes out, he comes out in a jacket, he's like, okay, we have 15 minutes. Oh, I can't work like that, man. We need fucking 45 minutes. Okay, you can have 25 minutes. The fucking last 10 minutes, it's like, hey, Senator, you know what? Maybe you should have to fix your tie. Fucking bajink, bajink, boom, bajink. It's on the fucking cover. Then fucking CNN is like a fucking George Bush ad. CNN's taking this thing and they're stepping in. They're like, Carry, blah, 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 boom, boom. Hey, they fucking step doing? right into it. Look at that picture. They spent a good long time in there. We did look that a while back. Picture. I don't know. Sorry. It's terrible. I was stunned. Um, number one, that you think that the New York Times is exists to give you good press. Um, that's number one. No, and number, number two is, um, you know, you're supposed to control that situation. That's your job. What are you being paid for? You know, you set this up. I mean, I do this all the time. I know how, why do you think actors get good publicity? Because they have teams of people in there um, negotiating, demanding, 
um, anticipating exactly what's going to happen. I don't know what those people did. They must have just sat back and said, oh, yeah, you, you know, do with him what you will. I'm going to go look at our plane. All right, so the limo now is... Uh, when was the last time I saw Air Force One? There it is, Hale. Well, we don't officially get it until uh, January. I wouldn't be that confident. That's what we're fighting for, though. That was our plan. We're trying to get it back. Okay. Where, where are you going? Hey! Handshake. Handshake. Here. Handshake here. Here. Handshake here. Here. Handshake here. 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 Here.
and it may go the other direction. It may just be people finally say, you know, Carrie's not really the guy that I can get behind, and I guess I'll have to stay with Bush. Hey, can you hear me? We're in and out of service. We're in the Appalachian Mountains. <laughs> yeah. I think I might find myself a husband here. Why, why is it that I'm always asked, what are we going to do when George Bush attacks us? Why don't you go ask George Bush what's he going to do when we hold him accountable for all, you know, the wrong that he's done? Oh, that's a long time ago, man. It's the same message. They're questioning why he always prevaricates on these issues. If we cannot believe anything he's yeah, said about the past, big word, nickel dime, nickel dime. How can we believe anything he's saying about the future? No, you can't believe a Democrat. He flip-flops. Right. Can't trust them. <laughs> Bush. Look at the much better looking staff. At point, if you're successful, as you go into the final stages of the campaign, where people really begin to imagine what it would be like to have you as president. Thank you. Hey, son. How you doing, buddy? Give me five. But I think that you also then have to really start connecting with people so that they feel some emotional attachment to you, to you. And I think that's more, that's harder for Senator Kerry, but it's one of the things we're doing now in this phase of the campaign with a lot of the kinds of campaigning that we're doing. Seti, you, you see that sunset? We got about two minutes to get up there and get on the stage. We can't lose this shot. Election now, and we're running neck and neck with the President of the United States. If he campaigns at that level for the next two weeks, we're gonna win the win the election. Bill Clinton and I were talking, and he said, "You know, when the other guy wants you to stop thinking and is trying to scare you into not thinking, and you want Americans to think about their future, it's pretty clear who you ought to be voting for." Meantime, in Florida, a new Washington Post poll showed a neck-and-neck -neck race. Just another beautiful day. How many beautiful days are left? 16 beautiful days left. 15 beautiful days and then a hell day. It's going to be bad? Well, for most people it won't be. For you? Haven't gone through it once before. Yeah, I don't look forward to it. In 2000, we actually... Uh, and we're running up and down the hall celebrating. So there was a moment when, when, when Florida came in and then Michigan and then Pennsylvania, those three, you know, were, were, uh, were a virtual lock for us. So there was, there was champagne corks popped. People were running up and down the hall celebrating and then they pulled Florida and then it was just this long, slow, uh, they let the air out of the, the, the celebration slowly, a little bit at a time. And then finally you saw the screen on a television said Bush wins. So Marvin's birthday drag is going to walk into his hotel room and there's going to be a pony with a big red bow. <laughs> and a fucking, and the advanced team fucks up the pony, they're fired. They're like, oh, we're going to get a pony. I'm like, get the fucking pony. I want him to go into his hotel room and have a big happy birthday banner and a pony with a big red bow. Is that crazy? It's like every little girl wants a pony. <laughs> so I want to get Marvin a pony. What am I, crazy? How big is the pony? Get the fucking pony and put it in the hotel room. I don't, what? No, just get a pony, put him in there, yeah, yeah. He needs to have a bridle on and just tie him to the fucking bed. And I want a big banner that says, happy birthday, Marvin. If you can't get a pony, get a goat but I want it in women's lingerie. The goat has to be dressed in women's lingerie. And in that case, you do have to stay with the goat, or the goat will fucking eat the lingerie and the joke will be ruined. I want a red bow on either one, a goat or a pony. Do it, do it, do it. You got fucking three hours. I'm waiting for an update. I think there's either going to be there's either a pony in his room or there's two like advanced guy heads on pikes. We're 
is his room? On 10? These elevators? Yes, sir. Hey. You guys don't get into the liquor till he gets here. Ridiculous. The fallback was a live <laughs> sheep. And what we ended up with, Rand, is that blowed up sheep right there. It's just crazy. Do you know how hard it was to try and find a live farm animal? <laughs> I was wondering where you were. What do we have here? I've been wondering where you were, you little vixen. <laughs> what is that, Marvin? Don't try running away from me again. Marvin, what is it? What, what, what do you got uh, going on here, Marvin? Ma <laughs> you look beautiful tonight. <laughs> Is she a beauty? Anatomically correct. Is yeah. she a beauty? Do you like? When I was an advanced guy, if somebody said, get a pony on the 10th floor of this hotel, you have four hours. I want a pony in room 1028 in four hours. I would have said, what color eyes should it have? All I got, I gave these guys four days, find me a pony, get it in the goddamn, well, where am I going to find a pony? I said, go in a fucking phone book. You're an advanced guy. What do you mean, where am I going to get a pony? And it was Pat Shuren's job to do it, and he didn't do it. And then he came back with a pygmy goat. I can get a pygmy goat, which was bullshit and unacceptable. And I said to Pat, you should look forward to a long life of mediocrity. You suck. The president enters the final two weeks with a slight edge in the polls and a giant advantage, 22 points, when voters are asked which candidate can better handle the war on terror. Is there not? 22-7. Take this out. We're changing the ending. Oh my god, Josh, stop right. changing no, it. No, we have to change them all anyway. So I redid them. Okay, we're adding two things to them actually already. Take out the word private. And then conclude the sentence with, conclude the paragraph with, and we will fulfill the hope of stem cell research. I want to get stem cells in there, it's too big of a deal. So leave it out. And then we'll go to just a new conclusion. I'm just scared that it's long. That's my problem. I hope fucking, who cares? Okay. If you give me the chance, I'll be a president who fights for you. Take it. Period. Easy, easy, easy. Why don't you take it up? Okay, let's reprint them. I'll take them up. I'll show them from me. Brokaw's going to come out this week and do a day in the life type thing. And rather we'll do something next weekend, and then we're still trying to work out Jennings. So those, and then Katie is with us tomorrow. So that's a lot. Yeah. See, right now he's looking at it. He's going... He's an asshole. He's just hung up on me and now it goes into his voice now. Yeah, that's a fucking my friend said he. Hello little guy. Valley on. It's your daddy. Say hi daddy. Hello. Say hi daddy. What's a pig say? Boink, 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 boink. And a horsey? Bah, bah. <laughs> What's the horse she say? <laughs> These questions are really easy. Bye-bye, <laughs> Jackson. Put the AC on, Dan. Yeah. Oh, thank you. We know a, a whole lot about... We're, we, know, we know what we know. Yeah. We know we're going to go to Ohio. We know we're going to go to Florida. We know we're going to go to Wisconsin. So election days, Minneapolis, Milwaukee, Boston, right? So our last speech is um, That's on Homeland Security. Homeland Security. We need a closer. Hmm. Dick Cheney said that if Kerry were president, the Soviet Union would not be democratic, so now we still be in power and it was one third of the Chinese. Dick Cheney lost his mind. Yes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> hey, it's uh, Stephanie Kirsten. Could you give me a call Dick Cheney? Thanks. That's better. Sounds like Dick Cheney's lost his marbles. I'm getting asked for comment. I'm just gonna say, sounds like Dick Cheney's come unglued. <laughs> Can I say that he's lost his marbles? No. Why? Who's that? Joe? Go on, Joe, lost his marbles. Whew, it's hot here in New Mexico, isn't it? There's our site over here. Is it where we did the Gore event? It's where Carlos Santana said the Gore. Mr. Vice President, I have something I want to tell you. He walked over, he said, 
Follow the light. Vice President said, excuse me? He said, follow the light. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? No one really knows. But if we did it, we would have won. What's wrong with Jimmy? Have you talked to Jimmy? About this? Yeah. He's tired, man. He's tired. He should go to bed instead of going to the bar. My advanced guys are literally, look at, look at Lipford. He can't remember to put tea in the holding room. I mean, he can't remember. These guys are just, they're, they, they got the week left in them. That's all they got. They got what? They got a week left. They had no break between. I don't think anybody has more than a week left, to be honest. Yeah, yeah we need a whole new team if there's a recount. to war without a plan to win the peace. That's not tough, that's bad judgment. And that's why we ought to have a new commander in chief. Katie, I'm sorry, the senator can come in now. Okay, great. Where are we going? Yes, sir. The unisex room. How are you? Good, how are you? How you all oh. doing? Good. There you go. No, you're fine. Uh, can somebody clip it on the back there, please? Are we going live? They're all taped. They're all taped. Give me a countdown here. Okay. They said it 30 seconds, about 15 seconds ago. Fresh start. They're having a problem in Cincinnati right now. They are. Holding for them. Having a wonderful conversation with myself here. <laughs> so what do you think about this election? Well, I think it's great. We're going to... Any surprises point. that you found along the way? No, but the polls show this. Oh, right. But you don't believe in polls. Well, I don't believe in polls. But what do you think about this? Do you like President Bush? I don't know President Bush. Senator, can you hear me? Yes, I can, Greg. Let's go. Ora parlare con tutti gli italiani in America. I can? Yeah. I didn't say anything. Right? Yeah. It's hot in here. I God it bless, it's so hot in here. I'm sweating again after changing it. In the locker room. I don't know who exercised in this locker room last, but they left a lot of themselves here. Hello? The truth is that in Florida, 1.3 million people, 1.2 million, don't have any health insurance. Did we lose them? Because I don't have anything. He doesn't hear anything now. I heard a click and nobody's there. They lost power, I believe, at the truck. Did you get my first answer? <clears throat> we should just go. Just cancel. Yeah. We're going away? We're going to do Des Moines and then cancel the last two because we got to go. Coming up soon. Hello. Yes, sir. Hi, Jeff. Doing great. Thank you. <laughs> John Kerry decided this was good luck for me to be wearing the hat. I've tried to take it off every day and every morning, and it's sweet when working on the speech, he says, where's your hat? Yesterday, he made me go get my hat out of my car before he'd go out and speak, give a speech. So I'm stuck wearing this hat. If they win tonight, I don't have to wear the hat anymore. So I'm very much looking forward to the Sox just winning, getting this thing over with, and I can take my hat off. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll be there in about uh, 38 minutes. Boston's up 3 nothing in the first. <laughs> I know. I, I'm like, I can't believe. I just like. I'm gonna go call my dad and my twin brother and my fucking dead uncle. <laughs> Red Sox just won the fucking World Series. This stuff you live. Terry was on his fucking knees upstairs tonight, going like, "Holy shit!" I feel like renting a unicycle and riding it up and down the street and just blowing my brains out even before the end of this this most important absurd fucking infuriating never ending fucking presidential election that I desperately want us to win I'd even give up the fucking
Red Sox thing. Kerry came back to the plane the other night. Somebody asked me about the Red Sox. If you had to choose, what would you choose? Would you choose the Red Sox win or you win? The Faustian fucking thing. And this is one of the reasons I love John Kerry to death. He said, I've actually had that discussion with God. Which is beautiful. It's a beautiful answer. He just said, I've actually had that discussion with God. We've all had that fucking discussion with God. I don't know what the fuck to say now. I don't care. I would trade it in a second. It's fucking baseball. Fuck baseball. Fuck the Red Sox. If you ask me, I say, fuck it. This is about something very, 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 very infinitely more important than all that. About a year ago, when things weren't going so well in my campaign, somebody called a radio talk show and they said, thinking they were just cutting me right to the quick, they said, John Kerry won't be president until the Red Sox win the World Series. Well, we're on our way! He still got the hat on, huh? What? He still got the hat on. Yeah, he asked me to keep it on until Tuesday. You have to keep the hat on until Tuesday? Yeah. <laughs> Bruce Trinity! It looks like Senator Kerry draws a pretty good crowd. everyone we do begin tonight with Osama bin Laden he showed up again just a few hours ago on videotape the security of the Americans are in their hands he said with the presidential election only four days away both the president and mr. Kerry must now deal with a genuine October surprise This way, go this way. In response to this tape of Osama bin Laden, I just made it clear, crystal clear. As Americans, we are absolutely united in our determination to hunt down and destroy Osama bin Laden and the terrorists. They are barbarians. And I will stop at absolutely nothing to hunt down, capture, or kill the terrorists wherever they are whatever it takes, period. What do you make of the timing, Senator? What do you make of the timing?
before Kerry made the statement, he had a briefing uh, with Rand Beers about, about the Bin Laden tape. Rand had had a briefing of his own earlier, um, shortly after the tape aired, with uh, you know, the normal intelligence community channels that are set up for the Canada. We can't obviously comment on those beyond that. Hold on. Oh, that's a good shot. Keeper cutter. I too. Back <laughs> <laughs> <get> this way. <laughs> You're gonna have to do this right. <laughs> so much more effective. Hey, you are more vain than any woman really? that I know. I'm turning down the heat. Oh. It's getting hot in here. <laughs> so just take off all your clothes. <laughs> Oh, can I have some of those? Yeah, not for your whole yeah, pocket, several. though. Okay, this is enough. You know what we should do? We should create a singles network for the wackos who email us and call us. <laughs> I have that Bruce from Oklahoma who leaves me messages. <laughs> But the great, the best hey. one is McCurry's truck driving cousin who calls. Who calls. It's a, um, we start the <laughs> so day in Orlando on Monday. Truckers. In Detroit around six. Um, <laughs> Maybe all tentative. With, with. All are tentative. Yep, and then we do uh, another rally in Cleveland that night. They're all tentative. I, I know. Did I hand you my doctor? Wait, is that mine? No, it's mine. <laughs> Ready? <laughs> Fixing a little uh, hot water lemon and honey. Especially on these cold Wisconsin mornings. Come on, baby. Hello there. How are you today, huh? <laughs> uh, it's a lemon joke. Keeps the voice going. Definitely keeps the voice going. And you're speaking as much as he is every day. You gotta keep the throat going. I defended this country as a young man. I volunteered to fight for it then, and I will defend it as President of the United States of America. <laughs> that Cranish and Farrell were on C-SPAN this morning, talking about how many bills he passed. We said 56. Yeah. They whittled it down and said we have 11. Uh, that's bills that passed. Yeah, but it's not just bills that passed. The Bush administration said they only passed five. Cranish and Farrell said 11. Marine mammal protection. Yeah. Flood insurance. Coastal zone management. Yeah. You fill, there's machine marine fisheries, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, okay, well, I'll look into it. And I said, sir, you know, there's different categories. The, I think what they're referring to is 11 that actually were signed by a president. It's just not accurate. Okay. Not accurate. Right. Call them up. Can you have uh, one of the research guys just pull the transcript and match it up to our research? And then we'll figure out how to go back to Farrell. We love it, Right track, wrong track is 40, 50. Wrong track, right track is only 40. For us? Right track, wrong track. Oh, right track, wrong track. <laughs> <laughs> I'm losing my mind. I was up so goddamn early. Shrummy woke me at 6.50. <laughs> I stayed up till you know, three writing something for this morning per their instructions last night, which they summarily discarded this morning. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Marvin, he's going to need to have his driver's license on him on election day. You can get it. Okay. You guys are getting a picture of him walking hey, into the outside of the state house, right? David. We, we don't want to we don't want to have cameras everywhere when we walk in. We want to set two shots. We want him walking into the state house and we want him voting. That's all we need. We don't want to set up any any other pictures that compete with that. And not only is that all we want to set up, that's we want to limit it to that. Because we need to have the press controlled in a, in a pre-positioned area, because you're going to have over 100 press show up to this thing. It's a security problem to have them roaming all around. We 
put our press in a controlled area and we give them access. We facilitate them getting the coverage that they need, but you don't let you don't just walk into a place and have press all over the place. <laughs> Don't worry about that. It's a fucking phone call where we're going through the plan. We don't need to involve the candidate. We do this every day. So just listen to me. Listen to me. Set up the picture so we get his face while he's filling out the ballot without moving things around if you can make that happen. The, the amount of press that we're going to be there and the, and the, the aggressiveness that they're going to show are going to be unlike any And we're already seeing that out here, guys. For all of our OTRs and pull shots, we're starting to rope them off and putting up barricades because they're getting very, very aggressive. Oh, oh, come on, this is it. Go, go, go. Fight, fight, fight. Go to it, go to it. Come on, we're in the home stretch here. Go, go, go. Fight, fight, jump. Deputy Mayor of Baghdad was all of the, um, yeah, the Deputy Mayor of Baghdad was advisory. killed? It'll probably come in two separate emails. Yeah. First, the advisor. What a mess that place is. The, uh, okay. Well, we're going to mass now. Be there. <laughs> Zogby just announced who's going to win. Who? Who? Us. Who? No, he hasn't. For, no, he hasn't. The, the national popular vote at 47.9 to 47.3, but he thinks it will keep moving. And. He says the states are all breaking the carry. I have a funny story to tell you about that yesterday. He was doing an AP interview, and they asked if, uh, does anything haunt you? And I was thinking, say that you're at peace, say that you're at peace. And all of a sudden, <laughs> and uh, he, he couldn't hear me, obviously. Out of his mouth, he said, well, I'm, I'm very much at peace. I'm like, oh, God, it's time for this campaign to be over. <laughs> happening tomorrow, Mark. Tomorrow? It's going to lunch in Boston. I might go see a movie. I have a weird ring to it. November 2nd. November 2nd. Day. Tomorrow is election day. Dog catchers across this country. The election day. On election night in 2000, after the, the four network showed that Bush won and we were on our way to the, to the war memorial to concede, Loftus called me and, and uh, now he's going to deny this, but it's true. Called me and wanted to talk about the entrance music. And I had to say, Jimmy, we lost. <laughs> We're not playing any music. But he thought we, we needed to keep it up. Beat. It's out of our hands now. We just can't make mistakes. What, what is a mistake that Jimmy made? Is it just him? Oh, a verbal gaffe or not getting a picture or being late. <laughs> I mean, the, the formula is there for us to win. Now we just have to see who comes out and votes. So what happens on the election day? We just basically sit around, watch nervously as the results come in. I may go to a movie. There's nothing to do on election day. It's all done. CNN's poll of polls, an average of the major national polling results, shows the president with an average two-point lead over Senator Kerry. That is the big picture nationwide. But as you know, this is about 50 individual states. And in Florida, the largest of the states in play, 27 electoral votes. Here's what the latest CNN USA Today Gallup poll shows. President Bush trailing Senator Kerry by a point, 48-47, among the likely voters. All of this within the margin of error. I feel great. I feel fabulous. See you tomorrow. Any response to the charge that you hold the office? Hold right here. here. We, I did not. No. Right here, guys. Right here. Hold right here. Dina, hold. Dina, hold. Let him get on the plane from here, guys. CJ, hold up. God, animal. Does the company that supplies buses for political campaigns really have to be called lamers. <laughs> Look at the two pits. Like, it's fine. Nobody notices it when you're doing well. But as soon as you have a shitty yeah. poll, yeah. they're like, oh, here's a metaphor. Here's a metaphor. They love the metaphors. The press. Here's they a metaphor. They love the metaphor. It's great. This is great fall campaign weather. 
All these people stood out here in the rain today. And they still stand in the rain at the pool tomorrow. I was so confused when I woke up, I thought I was in Wisconsin. But we weren't in Wisconsin? Florida. Where were we? We woke up. Oh, we were in Florida. We were in Orlando. More house. I said, baby. So, what do we think about tomorrow, my friend? Can't you tell by my demeanor? I really think we're going to lose. I think we're gonna lose. I do. I, I don't. No, I think we're gonna win. Do you? Yeah. We're gonna win. We're gonna win. Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna win Florida. We're gonna win Pennsylvania. We're gonna win Michigan, Wisconsin, Iowa, win? New Hampshire. I don't think we're gonna win New Mexico. You don't think we're gonna win Minnesota? No. No, Minnesota. Yes, New Mexico. Minnesota, yes. Yeah, I can see us not winning New Mexico. Nervous optimism would best describe the mood among his staff as the campaign dashed across the battleground states. I'm in, uh, up by the airplane. No, I just got off the airplane. We're sitting out here waiting for him. Yeah, high spirit. It's good. We're gonna win this. We're gonna win this thing. I don't know what state are we in? Ohio. Ohio. We're in Ohio. It is. It's great. Isn't this great? Isn't it unbelievable? There's more people in downtown Cleveland. Yeah, there have been this many since 1952. Or the opening of the Rock and Roll Hall of yes, Fame, or a football or baseball game. There you go. Exactly. Do you think we're going to win tomorrow? <laughs> Absolutely. I think we will too. We have a solid team in place. Tomorrow's going to be a great day. And it's largely in part because of. Not that I'd say that publicly, but. Had a lot to do with it. I have seen the crowd. It's a big crowd. It's a nice way to end the campaign. stake tomorrow. And nobody's got all the answers to all of America's problems. And when John Kerry wins tomorrow, it's just the beginning of the work that we need to do ourselves to create a humane American society and through hard times and good times. That's why One Nation Indivisible and United We Stand can't become empty slogans but need to remain guiding principles of our public policy. Well, the future is now. It's time to roll up your sleeves and to let your passions flow in the service of a more just and equitable society. That's why I'm here to stand alongside Senator Curry and to tell you that the country we carry in our hearts is waiting. So tomorrow, get grandma, get ma, get pa, get them all out there and vote.
we just have to win. What's the weather like in Ohio? It's great. I mean, this is beautiful. I mean, this is, as you know, this can be a drag sometimes doing this, but th this is one of those nights when you think, oh, this is why I do this. I and mean, it's a, a gorgeous in Cleveland. Weather's supposed to be good tomorrow? No. Okay. Uh, and so, and, th and that has to be a concern. You know why I think Ohio's going to go just great? Because when I came here after Wisconsin, you guys gave me Lucky Buckeye, and here's my Lucky Buckeye. No fucking way, man. You can't sleep. Sleep is for the date party. Um, now some of them. This one, he watched the movie. Some mindless thing. Like some mindless thing that made him absolutely happier than hell. I, I, I woke up at one point and looked up and he was just blank. In 25 years, I'll probably tell people that it was the greatest experience of my entire life. Uh, maybe could only be equaled by spending some time in the White House, but I don't think it'll ever be the same just from, in, in respect of what we went through to get to where we are, regardless if we win or lose. We've been at it for so long. We've been through so much crap. Imagine ever doing, you know, or ever having something be uh, as challenging or as rewarding. Or, uh, it, it's, it's been the best time of my life. One way or another, best time of my life. Who is doing the fucking motorcade here? You're camera one, right? I feel a little, a little nervous, but, I, but only because I, you know, it's a close race. You're here. You are here. You are behind him, okay? Who's doing the fucking motorcade? All the, all the uh, indicators tell me we're going to win and, and actually surprise a lot of people by how many states we pick up. We're going to be going in 30 seconds. Uh, how's Jackson? I'm fucking crazy now, Doc. I love you. I have to go. Call me back. Hey, it's good to be home, baby. I love you. Hey, how are you? Where's Melanie? Sounds like the networks are going to be very cautious about exit polling. Because of last time. It's election day. We're heading to the... Uh, Boston State House here, so the senator can vote. I wonder who, I wonder who he's going to vote for. I think uh, we talked about this morning, still up in the air. Coast is seven. And then, you know, all the way up till midnight they'll close, so <laughs> we have a while. <laughs> what? CNN's running non stop lunch coverage. <laughs> Theo, you didn't get his emails, mate. It's almost 3 p.m., the race is close, and John Kerry is still eating Little Necks. Man, can that guy eat Little Necks? Stand by, let him get in, and then we'll figure out how the hell we're going up. Well, tonight is all about how the electoral map shakes out. The 11 or so battleground states are there in yellow. Ohio, of course, looms large, and we are reminded once more today that no Republican has won the White House without the Buckeye State. You can only imagine what it's like inside the two campaigns themselves. The candidates and the staffers who work so hard are waiting, I suspect, anxiously along with the rest of the country to see how things break. Yeah, it's 535 East Coast. Eastern Standard Time. Mom's crowds, exhaustion, I think it's just, it's amazing. It feels to me like I just haven't slept in five days. Beating anybody, are we woke up? Are we ready for a great night here in America? What do we think about the upper? Upper Midwest looks very strong. Well, I think we're also going to say it looks like we're oh, taking okay. Hampshire from a red state. 
next yeah. step will be the same. Yeah, I think the okay. first, why don't we say, listen, we think the first state that's going to change hands tonight from 2000 is New Hampshire. If you can read them, top numbers carry Ohio, Pennsylvania, Florida, Wisconsin, New Hampshire. Okay, Upper Midwest. You know, very strong. Everything we hear from Wisconsin, you know, uh, says that, um, you know, we had a very, very strong performance. Uh, Minnesota, turnout. Turn, turnout, uh, again, very high. Minnesota, looks like it's going to be a clear victory. And we think it's going to be enough to carry us to victory in the state. Don't need to okay. say Huge margins. Yeah. No. People with various networks are saying that their contacts in the Bush administration, the Bush campaign, are dejected. Some have said they are certain now that Kerry's going to win. I don't know. You know, there are, there are, it's a fucking fool's paradise until 8 o'clock. And remarkably, uh, in the southwest, we've got Nevada, New Mexico, places, again, red state, one of them a red state from last time. Not only competitive, we think we, you know, we got a, sh uh, a good shot of winning both. Okay. Right now, yeah. can, I, can I give you the girl Iowa. thing? Yeah. You guys have got to smile back, and show sure, we're happy we're winning. Yeah. You yeah. yeah. cannot go up there with an intense face, okay? So, we think New Hampshire may be the first red state to change to a blue state in this election cycle. My understanding that the exit polls are, are hardening up pretty well, and they are consonant with what we're seeing in terms of our own performance model. Our thinking on election night was, if we win Ohio or Florida, it's going to be very, very difficult for them to win the presidency. If we win both, they're toast. They have a word for that, and they usually write it in big black print on the front of newspapers, and they call it a fucking landslide. I don't know that that's going to happen. I feel like the dumbest bastard in the world for even saying it right now. We're going to hold in Ohio. Uh, everything we're seeing from there, again, massive turnout. All of this stuff is very good for us. I want to go over and start thinking about moving Kerry to the I feel good, Kerry. I feel good, Kerry. I can't get Kerry. Yeah. 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 Regardless of the outcome tomorrow, what's bigger than Democrat or Republican is that we're all Americans. You should be watching this. These fucking numbers, it's all tightening up. Fitzwinger? They, it looks like these guys, it looks like New Hampshire's trending to us, which is great. And we'll be watching very closely to see how these states develop as this day turns. I think if Ohio yeah. goes, we're fucked. Iowa, Minnesota, those are Kerry states. Uh, and then you don't, you know, you look at the Southwest, Nevada, and New Mexico, and you don't have to take all of those. We think we'll take one of the two. We didn't think we'd get them all in by 11 anyway. So anyway, we're, we're, we're still hopeful. And yeah, there's there's definitely still a chance in Colorado and Nevada. Everything in the exit polling showed that those races were still tight. Fox just called Ohio? Florida's gone. Anyone call Florida in? Florida's gone. Uh, I'm a fucking Ralph John Kerry is the next president of the United States with Ohio. George Bush is it without. Over the state, uh, George Bush has done well in the so-called I-4 corridor, the Orlando to Tampa area. And even though the Democratic vote is high in the South, it does now appear the Kerry campaign pessimistic about the chance that those late counting absentee ballots and the rest of it are going to push uh, George W. Bo uh, push John Kerry over the top. So basically what we're going to look for is for Ohio to be, you know, too close to call, but we, we're going to probably try, if, if we have a one vote lead in that too close to call, we're coming out and declaring a victory in some way. 
So, you know, so we avoid what happened in 2000, which was, you know, Bush looking like he won and we were trying to steal it from him. If we lose, I don't know. We worked pretty hard. We fought pretty hard. I, I can't think of anything I could have done differently. I don't think anybody in the campaign could have done anything differently. I give, you know, we all gave 200% every day. Uh, it's been a long campaign. I think we, I think we gave the American people a pretty good uh, case for for voting for John Kerry. And um, I don't know if there's much else we could have, you know, that we could have done. So obviously, I'd be disappointed if we lose, um, but I don't think I'll have any regrets. It was, it was a tough two years, and we, uh, I think we did everything we could. So it's, uh, it's hard to really think about it, but we'll have to see. It seem like they're taking their time and tearing it down. Debris. The aftermath. We got one more event. One more speech. Wish it was a different kind of speech. Hey, you know, we're running our way over to Fenial Hall right now. You're just not supposed to fucking do 18 hours a day, even for a fucking year straight now with this kind of intensity, the emotional up and downs, and the fucking physical demands. It's just too fucking much for people to do. It knocks years off your life. It's the price you pay, you know? And a lot of these guys, and me included, are just uh, drawn to this process, you know? But it's not the fucking lights and sound systems and fucking Bruce Springsteen concerts, you know? All of that's supposed to be fucking energy towards a goal. <laughs> process is, you know, you are loyal to that person. That's your job. James Carvel said, you hire my ass and I throw my heart in for free. I did my best to express my vision and my hopes for America. We worked hard and we fought hard and I wish that things had turned out differently. But in an American election, there are no losers. Because whether or not our candidates are successful, the next morning, we all wake up as Americans. And the only regrets I have is that I can't sit and read about, you know, the transformation of the United States. Um, but, you know, tough shit. The universe hardly cares. I won't get to a point where I deny that George Bush is the president of the United States. I have, uh, I'm too much in awe, even with all of the ugly underbelly shit of the institution, and, uh, and that's, you know, that's the way it goes. I don't have to, uh, you know, stand up and clap, but... Is Theresa coming? Yes. Sorry, Sally. You need to sort of step back and look at a broad picture of what was happening and look at it in a, in a historical context. We're running against an incumbent. Not often does an incumbent lose. On top of that, we ran against an incumbent that was successful at defining his presidency as a wartime presidency. Uh, you don't beat a, the American people don't vote against someone in the middle of a war. They let George Bush characterize himself as a wartime president instead of characterizing him as a, just a guy who got us into a big damn mess. What was the overarching 
point of the campaign. I don't know what the hell it was. I don't know now. I lived it for 11 months, admittedly intoxicated and exhausted and strung out from cigarettes and arguing with press and staffers and the whole thing. I don't know. That's a problem. So what do you think about this election? Well, I think it's great. We're going to... Any surprises that you found along the way? No, but the polls show this. Oh, right. But you don't believe in polls. Well, I don't believe in polls. But what do you think about this? You know, do you like President Bush? I don't know President Bush. <laughs> find me a pony. Get it in the goddamn... Well, where am I going to find a pony? You're a failure here. You'll be a failure for the rest of your life. Just take a transit job and relax, because you're a pathetic... Loser. <laughs> Pat's like, and he said he's wonderful because, like, just the last time I saw him, he said, Oh, I'm going off to my life of mediocrity. Bye. I was like, Good luck, loser boy. Why don't you open up, you know, Ponies Are Us or something? <laughs>